What is up guys? What is happening? Timon here. And what I want to do today in this conversation is speak to my good friend and business partner, Jay, and basically just talk about some back end stuff. You know, you guys tend to see a lot of front end stuff, where I'm at, what I'm doing, what my life is like and where I'm traveling. But not a lot of you know that in the back end, we actually do some work too. It's not always just traveling. And I mean, that's a big part of it, but we actually run a business in the back end and most people don't do this because we do things very different than most people. So what we want to do in this conversation is just kind of update you in terms of what we do behind the scenes, why we do what we do, and just give some more information to you guys so you see a broader picture because every person has a lot of layers to them, right? They have the, the relationship side to them, the religious, like all of these different avenues. But a very big avenue, which I don't talk about enough or never really talk about, is my financial, how can I say, my financial career or rather my area of expertise. Because in order to do what we do and live the lives we live, we actually need to earn some money. And we've gotten pretty good at what we do. And we're very passionate about it too. So we figured, you know, let's start making some content about this and start talking about this stuff. Because Yes, I want to give value to you guys in terms of my faith and my journey and what I've learned and what I've discovered and as I take as I take on this journey, but a lot of you are interested in pursuing the same journey. You know, maybe there's an, a spark of interest in creating content, building a personal brand, building a business and all of this stuff. So, we just want to be real, authentic and give some back information to you guys which will potentially help you in making the decision whether or not this might be something that you want to pursue. So before we get started, let me quickly introduce my business partner, Jay. Jay has been a very long friend of mine. We actually started being friends, I don't know, three, four, five years ago. And from there, we started working together. And Jay is actually the co-founder of Gifted Academy, which is where we essentially, in very basic terms, how people build personal brands, leverage that audience in order to build an online business generating between 10k and 100k per month and that's basically what we do so over, you, over to you jay cool i uh, appreciate the intro i don't think uh you know could have been justified any better but anyways so i like a lot of techy techy stuff business stuff um that's really you know the stuff that i enjoy doing I, I do it every day i wake up you know we try to learn about new things try to always expand your brain so based off of offline chats that me and Tim were having is that we were seeing all this stuff happening all around the world. Now, obviously, Tim's audience is pretty large, um, 85, 90% American and places all around the world. So these are patterns which we have seen uh, through the existing internet space and through what is happening and through these trends, through my vast understanding of technology. I mean, there are some stuff that I work on uh, related in that kind of field where I work with companies like that, six to eight figure kind of situation where they do stuff and we have to assist. But the whole point here is based off of my knowledge and what we are seeing and how we're doing actively in the business side and also on, you know, just the overall living side, there are things that you need to be aware of in how you approach this journey. And this, this chat, which we're having here today is what I would call a high level conversation around the path, your path. And because no one's path is the same. Like you can study someone on the internet, you can watch as many uh, of your favorite person's videos that you wanna be watching, but at the end of the day, there comes a decision that you need to make when it comes to your own path and there are work involved with that. It's like reading through the lines, which we usually say it. When it comes to reading through the lines, it's just about understanding what are these things that you need to be paying attention to so that you can take the necessary steps closer to becoming the person that you're bound to become or tapping into that fuller set of potential. Um, that's really what this conversation is going to be about. And it's going to start at a point which me and Tim both agreed with. It's like, because we see people all over the internet make videos about this stuff and there's a reason therefore, but you know, this whole personal branding angle, why people are pushing it and also the, well, how can you, you know, wrap your head around the digital age of stuff that's happening? Because there are so many things, but we're going to keep it really compact in terms of, you know, in the next 20 minutes, we're going to try to unpack things as best for you guys to really understand what to pay attention to, how to approach different things and, you know, how to enjoy the process as well, because obviously at the end of the day, you want to be enjoying it. So uh, that's pretty much it, man, from my side. But what I want to do is I want us to go straight to the first point. The first point is really just understanding about building a personal brand in the digital age, as easy as that sounds, right? A lot of people want to do it. We talk to a lot of people uh, every week. I, I mean, the people that are involved in the Gifted Academy, people outside of the Gifted Academy that are just interested. 
the reason why I want us to start here is because based on statistics and stats that I've seen on recent studies, that shows that there are like larger amount of number of people, like a big number amount of people that want to either become influencers or they want to become some sort of a content creator in the creator economy. Now, that is what it is. Like we, we can't really do anything about all these technical shifts about things that are happening. But, you know, people don't no longer want to really become doctors. They no longer like really have that determination to walk a traditional path. And this is where it will come down. B besides the traditional path walking, because I know you walked a traditional path, I dropped out of university walking the traditional path. Um, but why would you think understanding what's happening on the traditional path side of things and this digital brand building internet stuff how how does those two things connect because what because something brought you to the point of understanding that you know walking that digital or well, walking a different path choosing the hard road is rather something that you would rather do you know fail if you must but you know i was going to do that thing because that will obviously connect into how we build what you build you know yeah so i think the big shift in the world is you know, we were taught and raised as kids that you pursue the thing that you have a spark of interest in, right? But the problem is that is not necessarily your passion. For example, I did really good in accounting in school. And so my brain said, become an accountant, not passionate about it. I was just kind of good at it, you know? And that's why people become doctors and lawyers because they, the interest sparks in school, they're pretty good at it and they study it and they become it. And before they know that's their identity. So, what shifted now is now we get to follow our passions because the internet is at a scale that it's never been before. So if you're a guy and you're like, you know what, I love NFL. I can't play NFL, I'm not a good player, but it's my passion, I live and breathe NFL. You could potentially start a podcast, talk about NFL for a year or two, build a big enough audience with people interested in that, get sponsors, get YouTube ads, and now you've built a company from you just being interested in NFL. So it shifted everything. And once people started noticing this, they were like, man, why do I need to go study eight or 10 years to become a doctor, which might be financially pretty, I mean, average in today's time, it might pay off in the end, but I need to study eight years and I'll do it. But I mean, I'm not like, no one's like, oh, I got an operation now and I'm super excited. No one feels like that, bro. Like no one feels about like that. But now, like me, we get to pursue passions and build a business from it. It does, I promise you, and Gary Vee is so big on this too, I don't care what your passion is, hiking, playing paintball, playing games, doesn't matter. Whatever your passion is, you can turn it into a business. Mm -hmm. That is what Instagram, TikTokification of all social media platforms mm -hmm. has allowed us to do. Mm -hmm. So I think in the society, people are starting to notice this. Mm -hmm. They're like, wait a minute, like this Timon guy is living in Thailand and he's always traveling and he's doing all this fun stuff. How is that even possible? Like mm -hmm. he looks so happy and content. I'm not saying I'm always happy. There's always downsides. But mm -hmm. in, in the macro, this guy seems so happy. I want to do this stuff, man. Like why do I need to do, you mm -hmm. know? And people are starting to notice this. And when they see this, it makes them feel bad about the situation they're in because they're working this shitty eight to five job they hate, which was always normal. Mm. It's not normal anymore. And people are being awakened to that, mm. you know, because the older generation, like even my dad, he hasn't, he can't understand really what I do. Mm. And he will always be in his lane because that's the only life he knows. But the new generation coming up now, they're witnessing it in real time. Mm. People pursuing jobs, making way more money than any traditional job could ever offer. Mm. But the biggest thing that the internet has allowed us to do. Obviously the financial side is important and the passion side is very important, but what it's done is it's allowed freedom. Mm. Now I know a lot of CEOs in South Africa, the online game isn't really a thing here, right? There's not mm. a lot of influencers that actually build businesses, but me being able to do that, I have a lot of friends here that are big CEOs who make, make, make way more money than I do in South Africa, but they cannot travel because they do not have the freedom to do that. Mm. They run these big corporate companies, 200 employees. Financially, they're crushing it, but they're anxious, they're stressed. They have all these employees to run offices, mm. all these expenses to do. They can never leave the country because they need to be here. Where I'm like, bro, like we're killing it. We have like two, three people working with us. And if we are tonight, like let's go to LA for a week, we can get on a plane tonight and go to LA. Mm. And that's what people want, bro. They want the freedom. Yeah. See, I threw out some things that I've learned and noticed and just observed on that note is that when, when you're going on, because we started with the, this whole thing about the path, right? So when you're solving for your path, like 
your passion, like you can learn, like a passion takes one to two years to develop. My, me, when I was in high school, I didn't know anything about anything. Well, really, not really many people do, but the whole point is that I only had this one image in my brain of what I was going to do after school, simply because of that set of knowledge that, you know, that we had access to different sets of information, whatever that might look like, it changes your thinking, it changes the, the way you view things and, and how you understand yourself. And I could really only start to make that shift in my life because this will, you know, connect to that point. Is that when I could really understand that firstly, I read this one book by Dr. Joe Dispenza called Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. And from there, I could really understand that the self is just this thing that, you know, we build up. We, we build this thing up. We have this image of ourselves because of how we got raised, what we learned. These things get embedded in our psyche. Like we, we then form this image of ourselves and what we can do. We're bad at this. Because like when I was growing like through school, like I wasn't really great at school. I, I had that you know, age old entrepreneurial story where I wasn't really good at school. I was getting like B's and C's. Um, and then when I get an A, it was like, wow, like it happened. So <laughs> that kind of thing happened. So the whole point in saying that is that throughout this process of stuff, like it takes anywhere from two years, literally to develop a passion for something only when you can have access to learn more about it. Because once you start getting access to learn more about it and you have people around you that are doing the thing and then so forth, you learn more about the thing and you engage more about the thing. When you engage more with the thing, you, you go out of your way to learn more about the thing and so forth, you grow a, a passion. But it, it's just, you can develop a passion for anything as long as you have, because what happened to me was someone gave me, there's a sport that um, in South Africa, you can see it as football or whatever the situation might be. They, will, they gave me a ball, right? When you were young, they said, hey, this is how you use this ball. This is how the rules work. This is, they teach you it when you're young. And then so forth, there's this big, you know, culture built around the sport in, in this country where we like were born. And then from there, it's like you just do it all the time. And then people tell you it's important because it wah, wah, wah. And then you only get to really understand what is important to you when you can ask yourself that question. And that's when your thinking starts changing. But yeah, um, I really love your take on that. Um, but this kind of brings me to the point where it's like th these tools exist. Social media exists, right? We, we've seen the power of social media. We know that the apps existed and then obviously creators um, that have built 1% brands like yourself and obviously other people throughout this process. How do we actually leverage social media and what is the relationship there? I mean, there's tons of stuff that Gary Vee has said, but not everyone can follow that posting 72 pieces of content model a day, right? So how do we actually leverage social media uh, to, to grow your brand on, on, like, on a platform like this? What role does that actually play, man? Like what, how do you see it, like the importance around that? I think when it comes to social media, what a lot of people don't get is social media like business isn't black and white. You know, it's like you want the formula to building a really successful brand and a guy like Gary, for example, posts 72 pieces of content a day or a week or whatever. I post four pieces of content a week currently. He posts 72. So if your rule is you can only grow on social media if you post 72, I post four. So technically your rule is invalid. And it's the same with me. If I'm like, listen, you can only grow if you put out four pieces of high quality content. Someone else is going to post 72 pieces and they're going to do really well. Mm. Or if I'm like, listen, you need to use five hashtags in your niche and that's going to crush. Mm. There's going to be some people who don't use hashtags at all and they're mm. going to crush. So it's not black and white. So you kind of got two options, I guess. The one is you've got to be relentless and take insane action and figure out what the best, what works best for you as a person. Because... Because we are human, we all have different past experiences, different journeys, we're at different places in life, therefore have different stories. And I believe that God has gifted each one of us with different things. So for example, some people naturally speak really well. So it would be clever to incorporate that with your content. Other people cannot speak in front of their camera. It takes time to build up. So for them, it might be better to just remove the, the voice and the talking head videos for now, maybe some quote videos or some storytelling kind of videos and the way you present the information until you ease up and can talk in front of the camera. Moral of the story is it's not black and white. No one can tell you this is the way and this is the only way it can happen. So back to the two options. One is you take relentless action and you figure out what model works best for you. 
Option two, it's basically the solution we solve for at Gifted Academy, which is we ma- where we mentor you and help you through the process towards figuring out what works best for you in order to get you the best results possible. Is it a guarantee? Of course not. But what we can guarantee is we can help you step by step by doing what we've done for not only ourselves, but hundreds of other people all over the world by making sure that you maximize efficiency in terms of time you put in and the return that you get from your social media. But that doesn't mean you cannot make it without us. You can absolutely make it. You just have to ask yourself, am I willing to go through the next 12 to 36 months of putting in a lot of action without seeing great results? And make no mistake, some of you may receive really great results on your own. I actually encourage you to try it on your own first before you take the step of paying someone to do it because Mm. who knows? Maybe you're on that lucky 0.1% who just does something right and you Mm. just pop off. But with all our clients, it's funny, everyone follows a different path. Everyone has a different journey in the way they present the content and make it. But ultimately, you've got to make the decision to do it consistently. That's the most important thing. You've got to be consistent with it. And like I said, getting in business with someone like us can ramp up the process really quickly, which gives you results in a shorter period of time. Or you take the journey on your own and you try and figure it out. But you can Google as much as you want. How many videos do I need to post? What hashtags? What sounds can I use? Because I've been that guy that tried that. Everyone's going to give you a different answer. Why? Because everyone teaches what has worked for them. We teach out of personal experience. There's millions of videos on Millions, bro. Millions. It's like fitness coaching, right? What's Mm. the best way to lose weight? This guy's going to say keto. This guy's going to say fasting. This guy's going to say meat diet. Like everyone has the same thing. Social media is exactly the same. There is no one rule fits all scenario because it's personal. It's people. And that's why what we do is so different because I can promise you guys now today, we are the best bang for buck academy in terms of there's no other seven-figure entrepreneur with a personal brand as big as mine that will work with his clients personally every single week. I don't outsource you to someone else. I don't just give you a pre-recorded course. I work with you because I've walked the journey. Just like Jay works with you on the business side and building a business because he's walked the journey. We've actually done it and we help you to do it. You see our faces. You talk to us every single week. Most guys that do what we do, they outsource you to a different coach or they just give you a pre-recorded course. Why don't courses work on their own? Because courses are generic. They're black and white. Post four videos per day. Now you're sitting there, you work an eight to five job. After your job, you go gym. Then you have to cook for your family. You, You don't have a partner. So you have like 20 minutes of brain energy per night. You're like, I can't do four. So therefore, this is not for me and I'm gonna fail. Where we are like, no, 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 listen, let me help you come up with a better strategy to optimize those 20 minutes that you have to ensure that you get the best results possible. So yeah, that's a mouthful, but that's kind of my take on it. Yeah, I mean, look, it's it's the whole point of like, when you when you go out and you try something yourself, right? You have this much amount of knowledge and now the whole problem on the internet is basically the following. The access to information has become so broad. Uh, there's every second person that has a thousand followers is listening to, to, to some dude telling them what to do and then they're trying to skip steps, right? They're, uh, they're trying to skip steps. It also happened to me like almost four years ago. And I luckily realized, you know, this big mistake that I was going to try to make to try to become this uh, guru figure or try to become this, this thing that I wasn't, you know, that I haven't really earned. Um, and then, you know, because you, if you don't understand what, what, what game essentially on the internet you're playing when it comes to business is that you first have to understand the rules like like Tim really in deeply embedded understands the rules on the on the media side and on the the branding side and on actually how to not only get himself to grow but other people that we've worked with like you've mentioned the point there is that who do you listen to you listen to Bobby that's telling you to do that with this seven step formula that is giving you for free like what what is the <laughs> where is the you know what is who do you listen to so i always tell people this look you listen to who you want to listen to based on who you want to work with like that's it you want to work with Mr. Ra 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 on the internet that's shouting at you all the day? Then great, go work with him. If you want to work with someone that's true and authentic, which we believe is the people who will win, not only in 2024, but 2025, is whether you're truthful and authentic in that process of really wanting to help someone. 
Uh, it doesn't matter what problem you've solved for someone. It, like, it does not matter. It's like your intent in actually helping those people grow. Um, that's what we believe. So this comes back, back down to my, just my next question is like the importance of authentic, uh, authenticity when you're doing this and the consistency in that process. I mean, there are tactics and strategies that you can go about deploying this, but at the end of the day, there are so much content of people. That's one thing that you really, in my opinion, that you can one side to just pull out your own authenticity because it's your own path and it's stuff that you want to share with people, right? Because that comes into stuff that you already mentioned. It's the consistency throughout that process of how you actually do it, what you share with people. And, and like the, the deeply embeddedness of the, the message that you're trying to share is only as powerful as your intent behind that message. That's why you'll see people with really powerful prison stories or something really make an impact in people because they mean it. They've learned stuff. They've went through stuff. They mean it. They've realized stuff. And now they're sharing it with you. So there comes a time in each and every single person's life, I will believe that you will have to, you can't just hoard all this information. You just hoard all this information, then like you will die inside, in my opinion. Uh, your soul will start like dying because it's, it's, it's like how you share that with the world. It's, it's like, and we have tools to do that. You can either go talk, talk to someone like this, have a chat with your buddy. You know, all that you're doing really, what we're doing here is we're just making clones of ourselves and sharing it with you guys. A chat that we would have, I always tell Tim, man, we always have these conversations. It's like, why don't we just record one? It's like, like we didn't go out to be like, I'm going to start a podcast on this. Like, I'm going to start a podcast on marketing or whatever. Like, we just always talk and I'm like, man, we should record these things. These things are powerful and valuable because it's like, why not? You know, like, it's just, we want to share. And that's why we're doing this. Uh, but you see, all of these things come, come down to just the pitfalls that, so that you would, if you would go and do this on your own, you would spend anywhere from three to five to even 10 years trying to figure this out. It depends on your intent, how much time you have, how committed you are to the stuff that you're really trying to solve. So that's just why we've built what we've built. But anyways, the whole point with this is, it comes down to my second point. Um, and this is how, how does this whole process with social media actually blend in? Because there's two more topics I really want us to just touch on. The two topics here is the uh, health element and the relationship element. Because outside of just business, there is health and there's relationship stuff that is powerful. And I think we might actually talk about the relationship element in, you know, in, a, in a later episode of something that we'll do. But I really want, to, want us to focus on this health element because you and I both know we actually met in a gym. And I've told this to some people that I actually joined uh, Gifted, but we actually met in a gym. And that was cool because Tim, it's like me and Tim, it was Sunday in a gym, we just met. And I needed someone to help me out, the, at, like it was some sort of a spot. I, I guess I needed a spotter at the bench or something. And then I just literally went over because it was this guy with this tattoo. And I was like, who's this guy? So I was like, okay, like, going to talk to this guy. And then from there, we just, you know, it, we started to yeah, add value to each other's processes and stuff. So from there, we moved into this. So fitness, fitness, health, whatever you want to call it. Why would you view that as important? Because you know you've built, um, like, you know, my other company that I've built on the side is called Sailboat Systems, but that's not a conversation for now. But I know why that's important for me, because something that I needed to solve in my life first was, was a fitness system for sport, which, which I needed to figure out how to solve it. And then that rolled over to other things, which I learned about my own process. So for you, why is, why is fitness important for you? Like, or health, rather. let's just say health. Um. <clears throat> It, it, it's, it's, it's a funny question because it's almost like if you pursue a health or you take your fitness seriously, you obviously eat better, so your brain energy is better, you sleep better, you look better, you're more confident. It's like, why not? Mm. Mm. <laughs> like, there's no downsides to mm. it, you know? Like, like, there's really no downsides to it. And personal journey, for me, it's, it's, it, it, it's my passion, firstly, but putting that aside because it's not everyone's passions you might be sitting there and think well I don't really like it so I'm not going to do it I think you still need to do it like it plays such an important role I think some of my best friends I've all now that you mentioned it all, all of them I've met in the gym to be honest you know because it's a community of people who strive to towards becoming better and there's this big thing and it's I don't even want to go into whether it's true or not but this is big thing and how you do one thing is how you do everything whether it's right or not I don't know but we tend to think that way. So you see someone in the gym and he lifts heavy weights or he's dedicated, has a good physique. This guy's pretty disciplined. So I'm guessing he's kind of disciplined in all areas of his life. Like this is someone I want in my life. You know, so it's a, it's a good place you to just, just meet you people. You can just test that conversation based on that. You'll know. It's like I usually tell people when I meet someone, outside of me seeing someone work hard or doing something really well, whether it's business or work or gym stuff, it's like 
you would know if you've worked on yourself on a personal developing side or your spirituality or whatever that might be like or your relationship with whatever you deem to be important if you worked on those things to a point when you talk to someone else your instinct your gut your whatever you want to refer to it in the first 30 seconds to one minute you will probably know whether you actually would want to pursue that conversation or where that goes because if we if if we don't find a middle line in understanding that hey this person's actually quite interesting like because there's this thing that happens and that's what it happened with us because we didn't have any friends we didn't have any people that knew each other we were just like oh cool let's Let's do something. It's like, you know, like let's let's do something. Let's see what we can do. Um, and then I think that helps a lot because it will latch on to all of this stuff. Because fitness in general or health in general, it, it allows you to do the other stuff better. Like if you the the how you do one thing is how you do all, like many things principle or all things principle. I I always tell people this. I, I, when I was younger, I never used to pay attention to detail, like until I learned my lesson really, really hard in, in my own life. Because when you start paying attention to detail, well, how you do one thing is how you do everything principle, it's just that if you for one day, for an example, um, let me give you a really prime example of this. If you one day do a thing this way, let's say you don't put the weights back, right? Let's say you always put the weights back because you know that's discipline, it's respect. But let's say one day you're like, Ugh, you know what, I'm not going to put the weights back. What will happen? And that's kind of like a rollover effect, right? Where you will not put the weights back. And that's how bad I am with this. But it's just the thing. You have to operate like this if you want to do better for yourself and for your people. It's like you don't put the weights back. Fine. Next thing you know, you don't do your work properly or you don't do this properly. And that's a rollover effect. And then you're mean to your girlfriend or whatever. Like it rolls over like this. So it's just a baseline principle of how you approach doing work because as you evolve throughout your own process of life, you will see that people value people that are thorough, people that not just say one thing, but also go ahead and do. That's where that latches into. But anyways, that's like the whole fitness principle, I guess it, it helps, you know, with keeping your brain in the game. Yeah, like, it really does help. And then from just like a purely social media driven point, a lot of people say that it's a downside and it is to some effect. It, Anything too much of is, is bad, right? Anything of too much overexertion. But like when you're on social media, you know people are going to see you. So you want to present yourself in the best way possible. And it's like, well, looks don't matter, whatever. Like just, just be real for one second. How you present yourself does matter to some extent. And you want to present yourself in the best way possible. Mm. And that to me is, is healthy to an extent because it keeps me accountable. Like some days I'm like, man, like I, I just really this week, I just want to binge and just eat normal food and just, you know, eat some sweets and chocolates and whatever. And then I'm like, whoa, but I need to create content, gym content this week. And I don't want to, like, I want to keep myself accountable. So for me, social media actually helps me keep accountable towards my fitness and in, in that way I present myself in the best way possible so I can come up here create my videos feel good about the way I look and people can really see that you know like I can sit here I'm confident I'm positive if I had like a cake before this thing I would feel like a bit bloated and I'm sitting here like oh, I wonder if people mm. can you know and it does play mm. a role on you it's it's input output like it's just what it is and it's become it's big be like what I'm seeing from the outside has become something that is obviously connected to a big part of, of what you do every single day, which is important to a point because if you, if you have a million, two million, three million, whatever people that rely on you to show up, it's your responsibility to show up. It's your responsibility to eat the good food. It's your responsibility to be on, on your best performance every single day because all these people, they look up to you. They look up to you for a, not just advice, but to keep their minds in the game so that they can understand you know, how to get through what they're getting through, because it's different for many people. But how I see this, and you know how my views are on things when it comes to evolutionary principles and different things, but how I see this on a phys fitness perspective is really just like this. Who do you think will win, basically, in a, in a perspective of like getting a job? The guy that's unfit, unhealthy, that's not sharp, that can't answer, like, you know, that can't think on his feet, or the guy that just looks after himself. Who do you think is going to impress the girl better? The guy that is not fit, not healthy, like, doesn't look after his finances, or the guy that's got his stuff in order and that knows what he wants and that goes out and does the stuff. It's just, it's like evolutionary biology and evolutionary psychology just wrapped up in it. You can't miss those things. It's like females actively look for those things. Whether we want to know it or not, it's what happens. It's how they make decisions. Um, that's a conversation for another day, but um, 
Thanks for sharing that. I actually just think I we can kind of like wrap this up just just with with a with a with a focal point here, which is the monetization part of of social media. I know this is a big um, problem for a lot of inf- not just influencers but a lot of people that are content creators that are actually. Uh, if I can find it, I'll get I'll get our team to basically just pull up the data or put it in uh, in this chat. Is that there's an article that recently came out. So based on a study and some articles and stuff that came out that showed that creators in general don't make more than fifty thousand dollars a year, like most ninety percent. Um, so yeah, but ninety percent of that happens. And how those stats have been pulled and derived, I am not sure. I have just noticed after being on like more than like. There, there's been a time where I've had to go through through a process where we've obviously been on these consultation calls or chats with people where you notice things and, and we've chatted to guys that have more than a million followers. We've chatted to people that, you know, they have the same problems that, that have some business or whatever. It all comes down to this monetization angle. It's like, what do I do? Do I do this brand deal? Do, do I do this product-based business? Do I start this service-based business? What do I actually do? Like, there are so many things that you need to be thinking about, right, when you make that decision. Because there are things that are unaccounted for. You have this much amount of capital. You have this. You have this going on in your life. Like so many things that we need to optimize our own thoughts for. So that we can know, okay, cool. If I, if I do this e-com thing or if I go into this angle, I at least know X, Y, Z. I can do wada, wada. You know, and then there's things that you still need to master throughout that process to actually make a success out of that thing. So where do you kind of see this monetization thing? What is your view on it? Like why do you think it's hard for creators? Again... So with what we do at Gifted Academy, there's ultimately two different categories, right? So in the bigger picture, what we do, like I mentioned earlier, is we help people build personal brands, aka get an audience, get people to see your stuff. And then we also help them monetize this audience by essentially building a business, which could make them some profit. Now, for these two things to work, you need need two things. To make money, you need two things. Number one is you need stuff to sell. So you need something, right? doesn't matter what it is. You need something to sell. Number two, you need people to see the stuff in order to buy the stuff. So you need that. You need traffic. You need something and you need people to see the something. And that's ultimately what we solve. So on the one hand, the people to see the stuff, so the personal brand, the audience, the traffic, like I mentioned earlier, I, I... I spoke about this for some time. There's no black and white answer to it. You either go through the pain of figuring it out yourself and hoping you do, or you pay someone essentially to help you figure it out, right? Which is what we do. But we also solve for the other angle, which is the monetization stuff. And I believe it's the same principle. Monetization, in other words, coming up with the stuff. Let's say you figured out this part. So you have an audience, right? You have followers, you've built a personal brand, but you need this site, the monetization the exact same principle. It's not black and white. Why? Because we are different. The same same conversation. You won't know what to sell or how to sell it unless you put in the action. Again, you've got two options. You either try and figure it out yourself, which is why so many people fail because they just cannot figure it out. It's not easy. Yeah, yeah the, the whole, but the whole point with that is I've met many entrepreneurs, internet entrepreneurs. I've met many uh, successful CEOs that I still work with on that note is that once you start understanding the leverage, which is deployed throughout the process, then you can start thinking differently about things. Because what a lot of young guys now realize is that, oh, the internet is powerful. However, again, number one, they try to skip steps. Number two is that what happens a lot of the time is that they don't understand all the different sets of leverage. They don't understand code. They don't understand capital. They don't understand media. They don't understand people. They don't understand how these things actually build into a business, like actually you know, those things are important in terms of how you deploy them, but it comes down to really the effect of just understanding, like you said, like this problem that I have either solved for myself or that I have worked really, really hard in really understanding and being able to provide value to someone. I always tell people, focus on doing something first. Just do that. Like, Whatever that is, solve for your audience first. If you've done that, then you can show someone else how to do that. If you've solved for building a really cool thing, you've built a tech business, you've built that, you've built an e-com business, whatever, then you have the leverage to share with someone. But then it comes to a point, you can't, you, you can't have a plug and play, whatever. Like, it doesn't work like that. Like, someone just gives you a thing and say, hey, bro, here you go. It doesn't work like that. There are so many things that you need to understand in between. That's why we've just built what we do and why we enjoy what we do. It's because it doesn't matter who you are, where you're born, where you're, like, it doesn't matter. Like, there is a process that you need to go through and that brings you a point of understanding of where your focus should be right now. 
How much time do I have to spend into that side action? Can I be spending 72 hours a week creating content? Can I be, you know, I'm working this job maybe. How do I systemize this? How do I optimize this? That's why I really like systems so much because what we really do is we try to solve a problem and we try then to build the system around it, right? To a point where we understand that if, if we have this input, then we get this output. But it's not always that black and white. That's why there's things in between like you've mentioned. So that's just my view on things. But I guess there are tons of more things to unpack. But I think this has been really powerful. And it, whether you guys have extracted value out of this, I hope. Um, I just know that based on the questions and based on things that we always get, whether it's people asking questions in generally to Tim uh, in the comment section or basically just in the DMs or whatever, we just know that these are the things that you guys want to know. Like, and we're just going to try to, from our perspective, give you guys as much value as we can so that you guys can use these tools and go and crush. Um, like, however you do it, that's up to you. But uh, I think that concludes um, this conversation. And we're going to do a few more of these, so just so you guys are aware. And um, yeah, that, that brings us basically to, that, to, to the conclusion of this one. Cool. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Just on that last note, please, wherever you see this video, whether it's on my YouTube, his YouTube, Instagram, doesn't matter. Wherever you see this video, please comment down below. If you have any questions, perhaps a big topic we can make videos about in the future, something that's unclear. This is new to us in terms of, you know, doing this. So maybe something we can improve on, whether it's sound, yeah. quality, anything. Like something we can improve on. Mm. Any questions, hit it down below. I also think, um, which is going to be valuable, is that we've created something new for you guys. So... If you want to see more of this stuff or if you want to look into more of this stuff, there is going to be a link down below where you're going to be able to join a school group which we have created. We are testing this so you guys understand this, okay? Uh, this is based on endless amounts of questions and endless amounts of like people wanting stuff. So we're just, you know what, just go test it, see if it's for you. And if it's not, it's cool. Um, at the end of the day, we're testing this too throughout this process of seeing what you guys really want and how we can provide more value to you guys. And that's really it, guys. Um, yeah, that's cool. really it. Cool. Thanks for watching, guys.